Hey guys, Rob here at 3D Printscape. So today I'm going to cover how to get started using the Orca Slicer. I'm going to cover downloading it, installing it, and setting up your printer. I'm going to use two printers as an example. I'm going to use my Ender 3 V2 and my X Plus 3, which I have right here. And uh, I'll just go through showing you some of the differences. And it's really just a getting started guide for those who want to move over to um, the Orca Slicer. So from what I've been able to tell, the Orca Slicer is very similar to or even built on the same code as the Bamboo Lab Slicer. Um, I know Bamboo Labs doesn't really open source any of their stuff, so I thought it was a little bit weird. Um, but once you actually go through the install, you'll see that it's referencing that quite a bit. Uh, but anyways, I'm starting to really like that slicer, so I thought it made sense to start covering uh, just beginner's guides and how to get started with it. And then I'll start making some more advanced guides on how to do specific things if that's what people are interested in. So without wasting too much time, let's go ahead and jump over to the computer and get started. But if you guys haven't already, uh, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. Thanks. All right, guys. So the first thing we want to do is go ahead and download the Orca slicer. So I just went ahead and brought up Google and typed in Orca slicer download. Uh, from there, we're going to go to their GitHub page. And then uh, this will take you to the latest release here. But if it doesn't, what you want to do is go back to their home. And then over here on the right, you can scroll down to releases. And then you can see all of the releases here. Uh, so it looks like uh, version 1.9.1 .1 is the newest one out at this time. So we're going to go ahead and download that. Um, you can go with a couple options here. So obviously you want to go with what works for your operating system. So if you're using Apple, you go with uh, these ones. Uh, if you're using Windows, you can go with the executable or the portable. Uh, the portable is basically just running the application in a way that's not installed on the computer. Uh, I think you'll have a lot of issues saving settings and stuff like that. I typically avoid the portable versions if, unless it's something I only want to use one time. So my recommendation would go with the full installer. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and do here. So go ahead and click to that to download it. And then uh, my computer automatically blocked it. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit keep so it downloads it. Uh, this is coming from a trusted source, or at least we know what we're downloading. Uh, so it's throwing this error because publisher is unknown. So, uh, so go ahead and hit keep anyway. And then we'll go ahead and launch that. So we'll walk through the install here. So go ahead and hit next. Um, go ahead and read all of the terms of the license agreement if you want to, or just hit I agree and then choose your download lo or install location. Um, the default's fine for me. Same here, just hit install. Then hit finish. Now you wanna go in and launch that. Um, it should have put a launch icon on your desktop or you can go through and grab it from your start menu. Uh, but I'm just going off of my desktop here. All right, now we have to walk through the getting started. So just go to hit get started. Uh, select your region, so North America. Now you have to select a printer here. So this is kind of, it's not built on the Bamboo Slicer, but it's very similar to, which I thought is also kind of odd because Bamboo doesn't really open source anything. Uh, but I guess they were able to get a lot of it out of there. But anyways, let's go ahead and choose our printer. Uh, so you have your custom printers here, either Clipper or Marlin, um, or you can go ahead and select your printer. I'm going to go with two options. I'm going to do my Creality Ender 3 V2 first. So I'm going to scroll down to Creality. Then I'm going to go ahead and select the V2 here. And hit Next. And then here it's telling you to select whatever filament you want to use. Uh, I'm going to leave the standard default ones here. So generic ABS, PETG, and PLA. Um, that pretty much covers what I work with anyways. So go ahead and next again. Now, if you're using a bamboo printer, you're gonna to want to install this network plugin. Uh, if you're not, you can skip it. Uh, I don't have any bamboo printers at this time, so I'm not gonna install that. And again, if you have the bamboo printer, you can go ahead and log in or register. Uh, I don't, so I'm just going over to prepare. And now I can see the printer that I had selected here. Um, if you're running Clipper, you can do a connection and specify the connection or Octoprint as well. Uh, I'll show you that when I do my uh, X plus three because I'm running Clipper on that one. 
but here you can see pretty much all of your settings and everything so it's enough to really get you started uh, let's go ahead and drop a stl file in so i just have a bench you i'm just going to drop in here and then it's saying there's some issues with the file you can choose to repair it or not uh, typically i don't do that unless i think it's needed uh, i've printed from this file before so and it was fine so i'm just going to close out of that and all of your settings and stuff are going to be up here so if you're used to cura uh, this is a lot different because your uh, settings are over on the right and then your actual like modifying the objects on the build plate are over on the left instead of up in the top um, but it is pretty easy to get used to uh, so you can go through if you're missing anything that you wanted to look for here you can switch over to advanced and then you can see all of the settings in here uh, i typically keep this on advanced and um, their standard settings are actually decent here so if you want to switch between the different ones that they have um, they're pretty good standard is fine for most prints uh, if you're doing something high detail you can go up to optimal or fine or if you're doing something large you don't really care you want to print a little bit faster you can go to draft uh, but for the purpose of this tutorial since i'm just showing you how to install it and get started we'll leave it at standard and if you wanted to add supports or anything you just go over to supports enable supports and uh, select your settings there uh, same with the raft as well and then under other here you have uh, the bed adhesion settings so this is going to just do your skirt by default uh, and the default settings are fine so now we're going to go up to slice it so we're going to hit slice plate and this is creating our g-code file and kind of giving us a breakdown of where all the time is spent and then you can export g-code or uh, go ahead and hit print if your printer is connected to it. In this case, we would just export it, uh, go ahead and save it, and then put it on our SD card and put it in the printer. All right, now that we have that done, uh, we can, oh, also it's worth mentioning, you can minimize this, but it automatically moved you under preview. Uh, so under here, you can uh, go over here and scroll up or down to see the different layer. And then you can actually see the G code commands in here as well. My resolution's a bit weird for the video, so it's kind of overlapping a little bit, um, at least at this point. Uh, but you can see here it's kind of it's building everything. Uh, so it's just good to know. All right, so now let's go ahead and add another printer. So I'm gonna go up to our gear icon here under printer and go down and select my X plus three. So it's going to be the QD Tech printers. It's an X plus three. I've got the four, a 0.4 millimeter nozzle on it. So I'm going to select that and hit confirm. So now it's going to bring in all of my settings there. And then you can go to hit connection uh, to connect it to Clipper. Uh, so you got to put your IP address in. Uh, if you look on the printer itself under the gear icon under network, you can see the IP address that's currently assigned to it. One thing to note here, once you put the IP address, if main sale is not running on the default port, uh, which is port 80, you have to specify the port. So in this case, uh, QD Tech uses 7125, so you just put colon 7125, and if you do a test, it should be successful, and we can hit OK. Now with that printer selected, we'll go ahead and slice our benchy here so we'll just go ahead and go up here and hit slice uh, it automatically sliced uh, but you can just do slice plate uh, but it was sliced from before so now if i go over to preview it will still be there and then if i hit print you should be able to upload or upload and print so if i hit upload this is going to upload it to clipper then you can hit print or upload and print or upload it and go ahead and kick off the print itself then if I go ahead and pull up fluid for that printer, you can see here that it did upload the G-code file to it and the slicer came from Orca Slicer. But that's really all you need to get started with Orca Slicer. I um, mean, that covers the install and the basics. If you have any specific questions, uh, let me know. I plan on doing more videos on this as well and some comparisons between Orca Slicer, uh, probably Prusa and Cura as well. All right, guys, so that covered the initial setup and everything you needed to get started with the Orca Slicer. As you're able to see, it has a lot of compatibility already built in the system, and it does a lot of things uh, with the connectivity that some of the other slicers can't. So, I mean, overall, I'm liking the foundation of it, and it's pretty simple to use. Uh, just takes a little bit of getting used to it, especially if you're coming from like a Cura background like I am. 
but you can look forward to more videos on it. If there's anything specific you would like to see, uh, go ahead and leave a comment below or join us on Discord. Thanks.